Curtis, here we are once again. Here we are once again. We've been on hiatus here for a few months, but uh, next Sunday night, February the 28th, the spirit of Star Trek returns to First Presbyterian Church in Encino, 7 o'clock as always. And we're really excited about this particular session. It's a little bit different than what we've done before, but our guest is Mr. Roger Nygaard, who is the director of Trekkies and Trekkies 2. And, of course, we can't watch the whole thing, but we're going to watch selected clips from those documentaries. Right. And we're going to be talking about all kinds of interesting things. Uh, Roger found some uh, fascinating things out about Star Trek fandom, and he's going to be sharing a lot of that with us. We're going to be looking at Star Trek as mythic narrative, uh, parallels between Star Trek and religion. And I want to point out that we're very fortunate for this particular video blog today because we have my co-host Michael Westmore here Yay. and Mike <laughs> will also be with us as always on Sunday night uh, with his insights so this is going to be a really really interesting mm -hmm. session I think not that the others haven't been uh, but but uh, this especially. one's especially interesting this one's a little bit unique. Uh -huh. uh, now we were talking a little bit earlier today about um, how you were not a big Star Trek fan necessarily when you started doing Trekkies. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to say that I was a Trekkie when I started out. I was, I would say I was a okay. science fiction fan. Right. Love science fiction since I, I was a kid. I've read thousands of books, watched the TV shows I grew up with were among Star Trek, like Time Tunnel, um, Land of the Giants, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Lost in Space, they were all my favorites <laughs> right. at the time, and so Star Trek was not special for me until the day came when I worked with Denise Crosby on a movie I was making, and she said, you know, I've been thinking of doing a documentary, I've never done one, but I've been out in these conventions, and I think Star Trek fans might be a really interesting subject mm -hmm. for a documentary. And I said, that sounds perfect, I, I can't believe no one's done it, it seems so obvious, mm -hmm. yeah, let's do it. And so, and that's how it started. Amazing. Now, you know, what, what are some of the things that you think you learned? We don't want to give everything away for, for Sunday night, but a little preview of, of what you learned about Star Trek, about fans, and maybe about yourself in well, the process of, of those documentaries. I know some Star Trek fans. My brother is a huge Star Trek fan. I have a good friend who is a huge Star Trek <laughs> fan who actually worked at Creation. That was how he could get close to it, setting up conventions. So they used to tell me stories about themselves and people they knew that would just blow me away. Like the lengths people would go mm -hmm. to show their love for a television show. How they would collect, what they would build, what they would do with friends. And it just, the drama seemed great and, and hilarious. And so I wanted to make a film that was number one entertaining, but number two would teach us something about this subculture. It's really an anthropological study of a subculture of people. And what I learned as a result, you learn while you're watching the film, you know, you, the, the common perception of Star Trek fans is they're a bunch of geeks, you know, and so thus should be ignored. You know, geeks should be ignored. But the thing is, geeks rule the world. You know, mm -hmm. ultimately, they become the bosses, the CEOs, the inventors, the innovators. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's wrong with that? And if, wherever you find a lot of computers, you find a lot of Star Trek fans. So they, I they, they to go learn, together, yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to find out who they are and then present that in an entertaining in a, in a way that the people in the movie could enjoy as much as people watching the movie. I think there's an enthusiasm uh, that you find in Star Trek fans uh, who's had the label Trekkie labeled onto them as opposed mm -hmm. to a golfing fan or a football fan. And Trekkies, if you go to the conventions, I mean, it's not like going to a Raiders football game. They're, it, it, it's a gentle, gentle people that have a common denominator that will wind up talking to each other that they don't know. They meet people for the first time. And uh, I remember standing in a line at the, having breakfast at the, uh, when, one of the experiences uh, over at, uh, in Vegas. And there was a little girl as we were wandering through and I did Terry Farrell for years. I spotted her. And this little girl had a little, couple little 
simple spots on her face. And I said, here, do you have a pencil? Let me show you how to do that. <laughs> and I introduced myself to her. And as we're going through line, I'm doing this. And then they went ahead and they sat down. And it was a moment later that uh, she came running back to us. And she goes, would you have breakfast with us? You know? And so we got to get out of line and we went and had breakfast with them. And chatted. I mean, this little girl was so, she was a Trekkie and so enthused about it that her mother brought her from the Midwest to the convention there. But I mean, that's how the conversations and the people and the feeling that goes on there, that it's, uh, it's unlike any other type of convention that you would go to. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with that. And, and the people, I think, and the same thing gets exuded here at, at the, our, our meetings on Sunday night is the, the camaraderie amongst the people that show up as opposed to afterwards when people are sitting around still chatting that anybody will walk up to anybody and start a conversation and, and you're, you're an instant friend. Yeah, th there are no strangers in Star Trek Gatherings. I've, no. I've, I've really picked up on that. Everybody <laughs> already knows each other in, in some form. At least in their mind. At least in their mind they, they know each yeah. other. And you've, you've told me some other fascinating stories about conventions I think we'll be eating and chew on, on Sunday night. Yes. Um, You watched a lot of sci-fi as a kid. About Fireball X05. Oh, of course. Oh, see, there we go. <laughs> Thunderbirds. <laughs> Thunderbirds, <laughs> Supercar. Yeah. Space kind of 1999, stuff. UFO. Uh, uh, watched them all. Outer Limits. Yeah. Oh, uh, we could go on. And that was appointment television for me when mm -hmm. I was a kid. You know, I remember UFO when that was on. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sunday afternoon in Minnesota, in Minnesota, Minnesota. I had to be home at 3 o'clock. It was like 3 or 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Five, no, it was 5 o'clock. I remember, yeah, and I had to be home for that, no matter what. It was uh, my favorite show. The Land of the Lost Counts? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. The Land of the Lost Counts. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, anything that was science fiction, I watched it all. Well, with, like, with, with Supercar, I first figured out I couldn't sing when I tried to sing the theme song <laughs> of Supercar. That's, that, that's, that's what I learned from Supercar, which is pretty amazing. Anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Sunday night, 7 o'clock, we got a lot more to say, a lot more to go into. Uh, this is an absolutely fascinating subject. In some ways, it's a Star Trek fan looking at what it means to be a Star Trek fan. And we hope to have a lot of fans here. Uh, the, the movies are very interesting, but then what Roger has to say about them is, in some ways, even more interesting than what he put on film. So look forward to seeing you here. Again, it's Sunday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, spiritofstartrek.com and if you can call and give us uh, a little bit of a head count that would be uh, very much appreciated okay Curtis we'll see you Sunday night see you Sunday night yep <laughs>